fuel efficiency is probably the single biggest lever that 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 we have in affecting the the, the demand for the you know for the product kind of across the value chain, right? If you start all the way from the downstream where the ultimate decisions are made, which is when the fleet operators decide which vehicles they want to use, a lot of it comes down to the total cost of ownership. So when you consider that, fuel is up to 60% of the total cost of ownership for a vehicle. People that make these vehicles, the OEMs, they focus on fuel efficiency for a couple different reasons. One of them, well, their customers, fleet operators, want to see it, so it helps them sell. It makes their vehicles more attractive because they, they fit the requirements of the market. But at the same time, if the vehicle is more fuel efficient, it can actually make it cheaper to build and it can make it easier to integrate. So if the fuel cell requires less hydrogen to produce the energy required to travel a certain distance, like a target range of the vehicle, then in principle, you could have smaller storage without sacrificing the functionality of the bus or a truck that you are building. It all starts from the, from the fleet operators, from people that actually look to use these trucks and buses. Ultimately, what they want is a vehicle that has the functionality of diesel, but without the emissions, it's no secret today, zero emission vehicles, battery electric or hydrogen electric, doesn't matter. They are more expensive than diesel alternatives. The good news is that the prices come down over time and they do come down with volume. So volume is one of the biggest, one of the biggest drivers. Now the hydrogen electric vehicle is not that different from the design point of view, especially when you think of design in terms of costs from a battery electric vehicle. If you were to take a $600,000 electric bus and you would sort of look at like, okay, so if it's a fuel cell electric bus, there's probably about 10%, 60, maybe $70,000 worth of actual fuel cell specific cost in that vehicle. As both of these technologies get adopted, components that are common across both platforms are all getting cheaper. Operating cost, especially in case of hydrogen, largely comes down to the cost of fuel. With the S1200, we've made two recent advancements. The, the first of which, we've increased the efficiency of the system by about 10%. And what that does is that just gives better opportunities from a TCOR perspective. The second thing we've done is we've actually extended the operating range of this system. And this is an important piece as well. It allows us to go to higher peak power and it allows us to provide more power to the battery when needed in order to overcome all the different nuances that may be out there with a number of different drive cycles. Not everybody has the same duty cycle. Not everybody drives the same way. Not everybody carries the same passengers or freight. And so therefore, having that extended range of operation gives us an opportunity to address those, those longer routes that might be out there as well. We've spent a lot of time working a number of different duty cycles, from drage to port trucks to buses to long haul vehicles. And the one thing that's evident through a lot of that analysis is that Diesel trucks, by definition, from tank to wheels, they operate at about 30% efficiency. With the S1200, we're forecasting that we can achieve 55-ish percent efficiency overall. That's almost a 2x improvement over the efficiency. And when you carry that efficiency down the line and you look at fuel costs, you can now very easily see how, you know, if you're from the metric part of the world where you deal in liters per 100 kilometers, we're looking at seven and a half to eight times difference in fuel cost comes out as parity. Maybe you're paying $2 a liter for diesel. Uh, when you can pull uh, $15 a kilogram for hydrogen from your local uh, hydrogen source at a, at a, at a fueling pump, uh, you're going to be approximately equal for the 100 kilometers that you're going to drive with either of those fuels. If you're in the empirical system and you're looking at um, miles per gallon as an example, then you know, we multiply the liters by almost four to get you from liters to gallons, and now you're looking at about a, a doubling. So if you can purchase your hydrogen for less than twice the cost of what you're currently purchasing diesel at by the gallon, then again, you're going to achieve parity. <music>